Assalamu alaikum, ladies and gentlemen. Aaj hum, uh, we're on a very important mission today. We partnered with, we had the privilege to partner with Chirtai Lab in Pakistan. And uh, this is a two day boot camp. We're going to talk about different health implications of um, common problems as well as some uncommon health problems. Um, we, we aim to discuss um, as many um, common health issues that we, we uh, run into in Pakistan, because now the flu season is coming. We want to know that our audience is listening to us today. Please engage. Please have as many conversations as possible with our esteemed specialists and doctors uh, through the two days that we've had the privilege to partner with your Thai Lab. Uh, let me start off with a very brief introduction of myself. I'm Ramla Karim Qureshi. I am... Um, a PhD in structural engineering. And you may think that, what is she doing talking about health? Um, but as it happens, both my parents are doctors and I was raised in a family of doctors. So, um, and that was how my parents used to speak to each other. Um, in, in, and we had to ask them to, we translate so uh, at a very young age, I realized it's very important to integrate how we communicate science and especially medicine um, to, towards the common person, towards the layman, so that um, we are made a little bit aware that if there is a problem, so please trust in your doctors, please trust in your specialists. Um, do not self-diagnose, do not self-doctor, but um, have, have the patience to go through with the process. As it happens, um, pandemic nobody could have thought of it nobody was prepared for this um and and as it happens we all were taken aback school um, and, and a lot of us took a lot of mental toll uh, towards how life progressed as COVID progressed in the world. Now that we're a good seven, eight months into the pandemic, um, I believe it's time to start refocusing on health, try to reevaluate our options. So I'm saying that if the second wave comes, God bless you, we would want us all to be very prepared. Um, without further ado, let me introduce our very esteemed guest, uh, Dr. Vahida Zaman. Dr. Vahida Zaman is the head of department at Chittai Lab for uh, virology and infectious diseases. Um, he is as specialized as it gets uh, when, when we should be able to speak with somebody who is an expert in communicable diseases and contagious diseases in Pakistan. Uh, Asalaamu Alaikum, Dr. Saab. Thank you very much. Um, sir, take some time, take the floor, please. Please introduce yourself to our audiences today. Thank you very much. You know, I am a professor of virology. I am a graduate of King Edward Medical College, Lahore. And uh, having had my MCPS and FCPS from Pakistan, I was sent to England where I was trained in virology. And I had my FRC path from London in virology and FRCP from Edinburgh. I'm also PhD in literature, in Persian literature. And uh, I'm dip back from Manchester University. And having come back to Pakistan, we established the first virus lab in the country at AFIP Rawalpindi, which I had it for 20 years. Having uh, done that, I was also associated with United Nations. I was a member of the Global Task Force on HIV in troops, and I was the WHO's member of polio eradication certification. Moreover, I served in uh, Africa and Sierra Leone, Liberia, and uh, having retired from army, I retired as a brigadier in 2009, and I went to United Arab Emirates where I was the head of the virology and uh, microbiology of my, uh, Twam Hospital, which was in affiliation with John Hopkins. And I was a member of all the international and national committees 
on infectious diseases there aur fir wapas aane ke baad i think this came last year i was uh, taken as the professor of virology and head of department of infectious diseases at chitai institute of pathology so jab ye shuru hua hai covid i am member of almost every committee of the government of pakistan federal committees and provincial committees and we have done whatever we could have done in this respect so thank you very much i'll be there and uh, i'll uh, be discussing as you wish and whatever the questions will be thank you mashallah sir as you spoke i was just beaming with pride to know um that when the pandemic struck we were in very capable hands um of people who who knew what they were doing they had a good background um and they had a lot of on ground uh, experience such as yourself and that, it it really goes to show that um kabhi kabhar however expert we are um there is a odd curve ball in life ke uh, khuda hame ajeeb tarike se aazmata hai main chahungi ki thoda sa aap uh, please let's go back a little bit um six seven months ago jab shuru hua pakistan mein pandemic um aapke nazdeek humne shuru mein isko um aap kya samajhte humne kaise handle kiya aur kya aapki um aapko kya lagta hai ki kya kahan pe room of room for improvement thi um thoda sa apni apni um hame explain kijiye ki aap kya samajhte hain ki ab agar khuda na khasta second wave aati hai so what could we have prevented last time um now that we know thank you very much uh, i was lucky that i was in the country and uh, we were actually predicting pandemic for the last uh, two decades in 2008 there was a bird flu then swine flu came then i was in uae was mars covid mars covid luckily it was not uh, that bad it didn't affect most of the countries of the world and luckily we controlled last year we were again expecting some pandemic and uh, by the end of december uh, in china in wuhan it started and we knew this thing in january in january the chitai institute of pathology became very active and uh, i was sent to karachi and different places and we started training our people and we started talking to the public experts different institutions and we tried to emphasize on the dangerous dangers of the pandemic and how we should prepare for that so having said this thing somewhere in march in the end of march we started getting the cases and first cases they came from iran uh, through zairin and they were in kohistan and the government of pakistan was very active at that time and i was lucky to be with them and what we did we established a quarantine center there in kohistan where we were holding these uh, people who were coming from iran and testing them and following them and then a time came when that quarantine center was overloaded and then we decided to establish the quarantine centers in different provinces and we brought them to sakhar in sind dera gazikan in punjab and uh, meanwhile we started developing our capacity of testing and the government of punjab actually took me to almost every medical university for training workshop how to handle these uh, cases how to deal with these samples and then i think uh, the main problem started when there was the interruption of the flights so i was actually dealing with the aviation problem of people coming back to pakistan and testing them and putting them in quarantine and then we were enhancing our capacity in different hospitals of the country to so tie lab had to uh, meet a very big challenge uh, we were the people who started the testing in great number and uh, still i can say that if you talk of any one lab system in the country we have done the maximum test in pakistan we were not having is uh, reagents the machinery was not available and flights were suspended i appreciate the organization 
especially Dr. Umar Chuktai, head of our operations. Actually, he did a lot. He arranged the uh, gifts from abroad by special flights. And with, I, I don't know how he managed, but he managed in a very nice way. Next thing was to train the people and to get a good body of the workers. And everybody was surprised that our testing capacity was 5,000, even more than that, testing a day. And the government of Punjab still is doing 11,000 tests. And we are we can do about 5,000 tests a day. Similarly, we established a lab in Karachi in Sin. That was the uh, lab site. But as far as the patient side was concerned, uh, actually, I was sitting with the government and we were establishing different COVID treatment centers in different parts of the country. Uh, our sister hospital, National Hospital, established the COVID uh, treatment center. And uh, then the people talked about a different myths. And uh, many things were, uh, many rumors were there. And I wrote about 20 or more than that editorials in different newspapers and media. We spoke to TV, even to Vice of America, to British TV and Pakistan television and so many other TV. I think uh, this was a marvelous uh, job done by all members of my team. And I appreciate everyone. They were there to cooperate. And the government of Pakistan, I must appreciate. I'm not political at all, but they listened to me carefully. And uh, at every level, at the control and command center level, uh, they were. Uh, I was used to be with them almost every day on Zoom and with the government of Punjab. And uh, whatever we did, they tried to comply with that. And this was the first time when a opinion of an expert was listened very carefully and it was acted upon. I must appreciate everyone. It was a very big challenge which we met. And we are still, I think, pandemic has not gone. We are still. And uh, I always tell to my colleagues and friends that let's keep the vigilance and let's not say that uh, we have actually conquered it. As you mentioned about the second wave, second wave, uh, there was a news from my side in almost all the media in the world. Even it was published in Canada, in France, in French, in English. And I said that second wave is probably unlikely in Pakistan. And I've got my reasons why I've said this thing. But still, I tell the people that the virus is with us and it has not gone. And uh, we have to keep our finger crossed as the same English and work very hard uh, as we have been doing in the past. But luckily, the load on the hospitals has decreased and uh, the cases, number of the cases have gone down. And I think uh, what the government of Pakistan has achieved is marvelous if we compare it with India and surrounding countries. And I appreciate the effort of everyone. Thank you. Absolutely, absolutely. Very wise words. The virus is still with us and we still need to take all due precautions. Um, what, how, if, if somebody who, God forbid, has recently uh, contracted the virus, um, what are some common checklists that of, of symptoms that you would suggest that a person does for them before they would um, go for a test or go to a hospital? Good. Actually, you know, uh, one thing is that COVID will be suspected when mm -hmm. there is a pandemic. And uh, if an area of the country where the person is living or from an area of the world anywhere, from where, wherever he or she has uh, come, mm -hmm. uh, within, uh, I think, uh, 10 days, I must say 10.5 days are the incubation period, a uh, person can develop the symptoms. If it is beyond two weeks, then probably it is slightly different. So. I can say between three to 10 days, on an average 5.5 days, there is incubation period. And if one develops fever, cough, and I must say one thing very important to you at the moment, that 80% uh, of the people they don't get the symptoms. Children, mostly, they don't get the symptoms. But these are the people who are infectious for others. So it is not only the symptom. 
it is the epidemiological contact which is very important and they should be very vigilant and then they can be kept in quarantine if uh, uh, still we feel and as far as the symptoms are concerned mainly it is the fever upper respiratory tract infection cough and then the most important symptom which was consistent that was the loss of taste loss of loss of smell which was it in every case almost and then the cough is enhanced and then one starts getting the respiratory problems we must do the ct scan we must do the x rays and uh, i think at the end of the incubation period the person may be tested and whether one is symptomatic or asymptomatic and testing the gold standard is pcr for uh, this virus and uh, the, as far as the sample taking is concerned sample is taken from nasopharynx uh and our team is very much expert of that and uh, as you mentioned of uh, my organization i'm proud to say that we have got 200 centers in the country right from gilgit to karachi and uh, we have trained our team specifically and specially for that and our team is working uh, day and night so samples are taken properly transported and you will be happy to know that uh, even from peshawar we have got two vehicles which bring the sample to lahore uh, twice a day from rawalpindi and i can proudly say that we can give the result in 24 hours to the people that is the testing and as far as the other tests are concerned apart from this uh, there is if the person gets symptoms of respiratory problem then we do it in within 6 hours we do ct we do liver function test so if there is a battery of tests uh, like the uh, this uh, c reactive protein is very important in these cases then ferritin so this a battery of the test has been suggested by us and the checklist is there and according to the need of the patient we can cater the kind of test in a particular case thank you that's yes. certainly very helpful um you mentioned that it's unlikely that pakistan gets a second wave yes. i was reading um, an article where you meant where we you were discussing about how our cases in pakistan uh, were fundamentally reduced as compared yes. to, even compared to neighboring countries um why do you think that was subhanallah subhanallah this happened and we're all very uh, mutashakkir uh and uh, thank you for uh i i am in new york right now and um it, it was an absolute disaster to to witness what was happening here in the us like in this definitely came as a good news ke pakistan mein even we we saw that even people who were posting on facebook searching for uh, you know plasma donors etc it all has Uh, died down a little bit like yes. you mentioned virus abhi bhi maujood hai uh lekin aapko kyun lagta hai ke what is the reason for our um, semi victory so well, that's very important thank you actually what happened uh, i say that lahore and karachi and big cities and uh, you can say islamabad to certain extent and sialkot gujarat and gujranwala they were affected very badly and that was somewhere in may and in june and uh, by the mid uh, may we predicted that uh, we may be having a great number of cases if we don't take the precaution and unfortunately in ramadan our religious scholars they insisted upon tarawees and then during the ramadan on 15th of june Uh, there was a decision made by institution i don't say about that that all the shops and all the shopping areas will be open mm-hmm. and, and when we did uh, testing in lahore randomly i'm speaking on the behalf of women of punjab we calculated that somewhere in the end of may there were 670000 cases infected in lahore and my guess was that uh, by the mid june uh, we had uh, about uh, 2 million or uh, more than that 2.5 million people 
infected in Lahore at that time. And similarly, the situation was in Karachi. So although we had a very big wave at that time, but when we came out of that, uh, then probably the situation improved in big cities. Islamabad still we have got a problem. But good thing which we did, we stopped all the intercity transport. And uh, the areas of the country which were remote like Balochistan, Gilgit Baltistan, South Punjab, west of the country, they remained safe from that and villages were not affected. So big cities were affected. So now you see the cases are more in Balochistan. There are cases that are in Gilgit and Baltistan, the areas, mountainous areas, which remained isolated. But big cities, we don't have that way. And uh, I'm still convinced that uh, there is no reinfection. Mm -hmm. There is reactivation that, that can happen. And uh, having this population, I, again, I have another evidence that three months ago, when we, two months ago, when we tested for antibodies, 50 to 60 percent of the population, high risk population, had acquired the evidence of previous infection by being positive, uh, antibody positive. So it means when that great number has become uh, exposed and they are not going to get the infection. So it is a it is shield against the virus which exists in this country. But in India, I think they have not taken those drastic actions and measures which we took. Mm -hmm. I have mentioned Zairin, then we did the quarantine of other groups, the quarantine of the people who came from abroad with the virus, how do we kept them. We had our quarantine center at expo centers and other areas and then the district level, level the university level. So there was a tremendous job which was done by the government and government institutions. And good thing what happened, when uh, people saw their uh, loved one dying, so people became a bit cautious. And now in Pakistan, generally, in most of the areas when you see in offices and schools and colleges and universities, there is so social distancing and people are mm -hmm. wearing masks. I'm in my office, so I'm not wearing it. All the time we have masks and we are allowed the schools to be open. And then I have also allowed the transport to come back and then the Lahore Metro, Lahore Green Line, we have told them that in October they cannot wait. So all if you see, I can say on the basis of my experience of previous pandemics. So probably we are not going, to, inshallah, we are not going to have another wave, big wave. Maybe a small wave we can face, but a big wave will not be possible. As I mentioned on the basis of antibody testing, mm -hmm. as the of our earlier studies, but even now we are uh, having a surveillance. Uh, last week we tested all these uh, on random basis, the school children, 14,000 of them. In Punjab, 35 were positive, they were 0.4% positive. And in the schools, we don't have uh, more than 1% positivity and anybody who is found to be positive is sent back home and isolated. And good news, I'm telling you, if any school is found with five cases or more, the schools are closed. If they are not following the precautions, they mm -hmm. are liable to be closed. So the institution and the schools and colleges and university, I think they are following the SOP by and large, I may say. Uh, this is uh, the success and in our country, which is highly, you know, the people are not that uh, educated, literate, but at least uh, uh, you, you can see the number of masks which they are wearing. And uh, when they go for the uh, shopping in the mall, at the mall uh, door, uh, the people are asked to be in the mask and nobody is allowed if one is not wearing the mask in big malls of the city. So, I am sure, inshallah, we are we will not be having that big wave which we suffered in somewhere in June. Thank you. Um, Bilkul Aapne Baat Sahi Kahi. Kabi Kabi, I compare people here uh, in the US with people back in Pakistan. We we expect wow. the, uh, just Aapne Baat Kahi, ke literacy or general, general literacy about diseases may maybe better here in the US, but there is this certain resistance towards um, taking precautions. However, 
in Pakistan, we we genuinely saw that people were taking care. That uh, we genuinely saw that when the lockdown happened, people uh, tried to follow all uh, guidelines issued by both uh, specialists and doctors as well as the government. Um, of course, there 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 is always uh, risks. Of course, I'm pandemic ki baat kar rahe. Um, Maybe I, I just want to quickly draw on your experience of previous uh, uh, epidemics and pandemics that you have dealt with in other parts of the world as well. Um, were there similar resistances towards guidelines, for example, wearing masks, um, getting tested and things like that? Yeah, very good. You know, uh, there are so many pandemics. But every pandemic has got its own way. Um, AIDS is a pandemic. We don't do with the AIDS like we deal with the COVID-19. Uh, the similarly, the pandemic of the dengue is, uh, you know, it is there. You can say pandemic uh, is the disease which takes over the world, all over the world. As far as the COVID is concerned, we compare with the influenza, which was mostly the root cause of the pandemic. And uh, we had uh, bird flu somewhere in 2006, 2007, and 8 in the country, as it was in other countries. And 2009, the pandemic of uh, the uh, swine flu came. Swine flu hit very badly. And uh, total deaths which in the world were recorded were 284,000 at that time with the uh, that uh, virus. And it was H1N1 where I was working, actually we emphasized on the masks, we emphasize on social distancing and at airports the people were being uh, checked uh, by body temperatures and by thermal scanners and others. Uh, and then uh, we were asked on vaccines. Very quickly the vaccine came and uh, although the pharmaceutical companies were pushing us hard at that time to buy the Relenza and uh, other medicines. But uh, I told to the government of UAE at that time that when I was working that there's no need for stockpiling. The pharmaceuticals, they were not very happy with my stance. And we, I think, but the worst thing which came was the mars -CoV. mars -CoV affected the United Arab Emirates, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, and surrounding countries. The problem with that was, although we were not having that many number of cases, Total number of cases, if you say, they were about uh, 2,500. And uh, there, was, uh, there was another outbreak in South Korea, which was weak with the Arabia. But the mortality was uh, very high, and every third person who used to get the disease was dying. So, you know, when every third person was dying, and disease was in my city, and uh, it was uh, so, uh, around the camel farms, we took very strong precautions strong isolations and uh, we actually we called the uh, camels and uh, we stopped the people going there and then i think luckily that stopped although we were worried that in saudi arabia if it affects Makkah and medina and at hajj if it starts uh, affecting the people it will be a disaster but luckily i think with the concerted efforts of the arab countries it uh, was uh, stopped and uh, having that of swine flu, bird flu, mars -CoV, and indirectly dealing with this uh, SARS, which was occurring uh, in 2003 in China. I was not directly, back, but we were actually taking all precautions and making the plans. So when this pandemic came, uh, this was the first pandemic in the world of the coronavirus. So far, the pandemics were related to influenza viruses. Influenza viruses, you know, we do have vaccines. Then it was very easy for us to prepare a vaccine for a new strain of the influenza. But that was not the case with the uh, coronavirus. But luckily, in the days of SARS and in the days of uh, this mars COVID, the vaccine efforts were made for those viruses. But luckily, those viruses disappeared or they were controlled before the vaccine came. So that experience was used for the production of this vaccine. But again, I am hopeful that maybe the virus uh, disappears before we need that much vaccine. And uh, now it is the moot question whether the vaccine will stop the virus 
our virus will be stopped before the vaccine preparation so pandemic what pandemic means means disaster disaster means a plan at the government level and uh, then the nation working as a whole and complying with the policies which are given to them that is the key to uh, control a pandemic whatever pandemic it is we have uh, to, been told about 1918 the pandemic of influenza which was quite uh, bad and it killed about uh, you know some people there 60 million others say 120 so that we have kind of pandemic world has not seen i hope inshallah we will not have that pandemic again but even in that pandemic what happened as a control by the movement of the people by closing of the schools theaters and then closing of the institutions and asking the people to go home so those were years which were adopted then they are still there and i think those pandemics have taught us lesson on the basis of which we could make our policies and much wiser what the people were uh, there in uh, uh, first world war in 1918 and we were much more equipped our hospitals were well prepared and uh, i think there was no chaos which were after the war in uh, 1918 the way the europe was devastated and war effects were there everywhere but lucky uh, the plans were made policies were made day and night the people work ngos work the organization work and i think it was concerted efforts and i must appreciate the efforts made by by my colleagues and the government of pakistan whatever they could do they did it and they did it very wisely and at least they acted upon whatever we said as experts the political input was the least and the technical input was the most that was i think and it should be due to success in the other country china you know where the virus started how nicely they have controlled and they have mm-hmm. controlled six years new zealand has controlled new zealand is lucky it is an island it is very far away from the world and uh, they have controlled it and uh, there is it for coming back but i think if the nation behaves systematically and with discipline then they don't see this thing but if you give the human rights and other things and mobility and then the people right of mobility and people might not be listening so probably that might be the reason anywhere in the world which we are seeing in those countries where this pandemic has bad i'm not talking of any particular country but those countries who had bad taste of this pandemic probably the people have been extra i think they were mobile and they were not uh, that careful in day to day interaction and certain countries like south korea and britain where you know population is much more and people have to squeeze in uh, the small rooms small houses and transport system is such in the underground of london so that was the time when uh, that country had suffered so if the population pressure is more and institutional press its pressure on institution is more then probably it becomes difficult so what my a uh, message was to this country keep a distance and keep a distance and maintain a distance and then cover your face with whatever weight you can do and then wash your hands very carefully or sanitize your hands. so these are three things and uh, i think it is not a rocket science it is not very difficult anybody can act upon that and uh, these countries like you mentioned of new york new york was badly affected earlier this year and then they came out and other states were affected you know initially the michigan new york and these areas were affected but later on you know it went to the south it went to florida and they opened the beaches <coughs> and texas and california was very badly affected and now it is moving on but uh, i think if the restriction is done on the mobility of the people and uh, people stay uh, where they are uh, the things will change at least they stay for some time but it is for 15 days let's test it and let's keep the distances and don't be very close to each other that's my message thank you bilkul sahi kaha aapne humne thodi baat ki about um, government level implications uh, lekin jab baat aati compliance and um, uh, prevention 
तो अलॉट कैन बी सेव्ड एट यूनिट लेवल एज वेल के हर फैमिली हर घर आइसोलेट करे इतना जो हम पाकिस्तानी लोगों में मिलाप है थोड़ा उसको रिड्यूस करें um what would you suggest so for example now that schools are reopening i i hear a lot of mothers are very scared uh because jaise aapne pehle mention kiya tha that children uh may not exhibit the symptoms but they can still be the carriers and they can still have uh, the ability to transmit the virus to for example the grandparents etc uh jo ki pakistan mein it's a very real problem because we live in joint families we live with our elderly parents um so so what are some of the precautionary measures that we can take uh, i i know ke schools mein limited uh, uh bulaya ja raha hai bachon ko lekin gharon mein hum chote bachon ko ye kaise explain kar sakte hain ke mask swap nahi kare apna um ya aapas mein haath na milaye uh ye aap aapki kya raya as an expert ke how do we communicate this to a child who has no idea what a pandemic is a uh, very good my grandson is 4 years of age and i did not shake hand with him and he was convinced that uh, my dada is not doing my granddaughters i put the mask on their face small uh, girls and there are photographs you can see and uh, i think the children can be disciplined i must say this thing if we work hard and uh, then you ask about the schools when the schools were being opened We wrote SOPs, and what SOP was that we made the schools into shifts, and then uh, we enhanced the dis- distance between the stools and the chairs, and they were kept apart, and then wearing of mask. And now, what we are doing, in, as far as the government of Punjab is concerned, not only they are inspecting the schools whether they are following these precautions or not. they are also randomly testing the schools the children we are taking the samples on regular basis and watching the progress as i mentioned still 1% or less than 1% school children are infected but if the infection rate goes high then we will take and right we that we may close those schools and may be very strict you know pakistan did another good thing with the other country that was smart lockdown and it is a smart closure yeah. of the school are uh, making decision on case to case basis and children as far as the, uh, they are concerned i think it is slightly difficult for a child less than 4 years but 4 years on one yes of course and then as far as the government of pakistan is concerned it has clearly mentioned that while go you are going to the malls and other area don't bring the children and uh, keep them at home and if you don't uh, move them outside home then the children will remain uninfected as for the school that can send yes of course uh, we have made the policies and uh, we are watching and uh, i still the news which we have got the last meeting which we had in the government of punjab office few days earlier Uh, we have found that generally the compliance is good because the people don't want to close their schools and also it is very difficult let me tell you putting the mask hold a day by a child but still we are emphasizing on that and as far as the washrooms are concerned the facilities where they were liable to touch the knobs and doors which may be infected we very regularly and Realizing their movement to the washroom and coming back from that, and as well as the parking of the and taking them and receiving them, I think again the emphasis be is on that that uh, the distance will be maintained and there will be no rush uh, created by the parents. So from our side, we are taking precaution, and hopefully, although we have done an experimentation, but we couldn't keep the children at home, and I have actually told to my Doubt was in law that the children should be sent to the school that they should not worry, and uh, I think uh, they are going back to the schools. Uh, confidence will come if we don't have that number of cases positive, and I hope uh, with the periodic testing and periodic inspections and taking punitive measures, which we are taking at times, inshallah, the things will be much better.
Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, so, so parents can role model themselves. Parents and grandparents can role model themselves, and um, we can reinforce and discipline uh, little children who may not grasp the entire concept of what a pandemic implies. But if we are doing something, our kids are bound to 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 see and uh, repeat. Um, on. हमने देखा कि जब pandemic आया तो initially so Pakistan may we're not new to crisis we know how to cope um, and a, a lot of people kept their wits around them and a lot of people were very um, sanely dealing with the the entire process um, but as we moved into the lockdown there were a lot of mental health implications uh, which which we can expect with log a lot of uh, log layoff ho gaye bahut sari jagahon se um baaki duniya mein ek anxiety thi um how, how as a doctor what is your recommendation for people who are getting tired of sitting at home um of course we are social animals and we do uh, wish to see you know family friends hang out uh, how can we take care of ourselves uh from from a mental health perspective while also complying with uh, guidelines you know very good question which you have asked me we are the social animals and we need interaction i think we learned a lot from this pandemic uh, people spent much time on uh, mobiles zoom meetings work from home and uh, it was quite popular and uh, i think the people even now they have started uh, meeting each other visiting at their homes but by keeping a distance i tell them that if you keep a distance of more than 8 feet you wear the mask and uh, you don't uh, rush in the houses uh, you know uh, even i called my friends my classmates on uh, dinner and we only invited eight nine people and i got a big house and we kept them at distance and we were wearing the masks uh, before uh, taking the meals and then after taking the meals we wore the mask so interaction has started at limited scale as we have started the school opening we have started the malls and others and as far as the human being is concerned yes of course people cannot be isolated forever quarantine is a very very painful process if you keep them out of the uh, the population but taking these things as i mentioned with this uh, whatsapp with the whatsapp calls by these mails by these uh, interaction with the by the help of the these modern gadgets and telephones and then uh, i told tell them that uh, marriages although it has very badly affected the industry of the marriage halls and industry of the poultry and food industry because you know although the people spend a lot on these uh, marriages but there are these people who get the benefit despite the they join together their expenses have gone down and uh, i think it has not stopped the process of the marriages that uh, is going on and but at limited scale i have seen 4% from the family coming from this side and 6% sitting coming from that side and keeping a distance so i think we have started learning with the pandemic the best thing is the life and uh, our dd health very good friend of mine dr arun jangi he actually sends the messages on uh, facebook and uh, on other media channel and he records and he tells i am talking about dd health of punjab he requests the case zindagi pehle hai jaan hai to jahan hai apni zindagi bacha lo kuch sabar kar lo aur bach gaye to phir hum aapas mein milte bhi rahenge aur milenge bhi lekin mera khayal hai ki is pandemic mein television ne zoom ne और ये जो हमारे पास मॉडर्न गैजेट है इससे काफी हमें हेल्प की है जहां तक आपने बताया कि मेंटल हेल्थ का प्रॉब्लम है यस ऑफ कोर्स सम पीपल हैव सम ग्रुप्स हैव सफर्ड 
but they have not got the access to the medical facilities as they wanted and uh, like the children with the thalassemia Chuktai Institute of Pathology, Chuktai Lab has done a good job that they have tried to maintain their bloodlines, blood donations, and uh, people were coming forward. And uh, we took special care for that. But as far as the mental health is concerned, I think still the families, uh, they interact, the children visit to the parents rather than making a rush. Uh, we have just stopped the marriage ceremonies. And even at Janaza and at funerals, and then the party which we used to gather a lot in number, that we have controlled a lot, and uh, that has helped. And in the meantime, Zindagi is Life is there, life has never stopped. And uh, we are uh, in the midst of, uh, in the middle of the pandemic, I must say. But in Pakistan, I am still expecting, hoping that we are at the tail end of the pandemic, but the other countries, they are in the middle of the pandemic. So I think uh, with the uh, sociologists can tell you better uh, how we can cater it further, but I think we have started learning a lot and we have learned a lot in the pandemic, how we can live with that and how we can work. But the one thing was the poor people who have got small houses, the people who are wages, others, and it was a very big blow to them. Uh, the people who used to earn in the day and spend in the night, and they had nothing. Uh, people have helped. I think the neighbors have helped. People have given them the food and other things. And the social system has been active. And I must appeal uh, through this channel to people that they should also be watchful in their neighborhood around them that people should not die of hunger. And uh, if there is some, at least the ration, the food, it should be made available to the needy people. If that is done, uh, I think uh, we will be out of that. I was expecting to be out in October. And inshallah, by the end of this year, if I, everything goes well in this country, uh, we will be back to the normal life, inshallah. And uh, the cases are going down and down to Punjab. Yesterday, we had 77 cases, which is so little as far as the population is concerned. But in the country, we have got more than 600 cases, but that is from the remote areas. As I mentioned about Bilgit, Pakistan, mm -hmm. I mentioned about Pakistan. Uh, but uh, generally, we are coming out of that pandemic, as I am seeing. And Alhamdulillah, that is going down and down. And uh, the wave is, has not come back, uh, despite our fear in Muharram and on Eid al-Adha. And uh, I think then the Muladun Nabi is coming. I still request my kid, friends that the religious sentiments are very good things, but they should be expressed in a disciplined way. And if we can still save ourselves, we should save. Masjid Abdekne, Friday. Still, it is uh, done with the restrictions. The people uh, know how to sit there. And prayers, Jumaat, Jumaat prayers, they have uh, been changed to some extent. People have kept a lot of distance, and there is an attempt to wash the floor, knobs, doors, and others. So, from the religious uh, activities, uh, if you come down to the industrial activities, and then educational activities, and then the hospital activities, and organizational activities, there was re adjustment. And I think it was change of behavior. The most important thing in any pandemic, whether you call of AIDS or any other pandemic, is change of behavior. And how we achieve it, I think it is with the education. And uh, we are lucky that we are in an era when TV is there, when the media, they are there, and uh, the people are actually watching and uh, listening, and there is an impact. Previously, if we talk of a thousand, uh, hundred years ago, in 1918, these things were not there, and people remained isolated, and people were not knowing how to do it because it was a slow uh, move of the information. This time, the information is moving fast. But as far as the uh, mental health is concerned, I think, again, as a Muslim Quran says, Allah 
اللہ کا اگر ذکر کریں اور خدا کو یاد کریں تلاوت سنیں اور تلاوت کریں اور نیڈی لوگوں کی خدمت ہم انڈائریکٹلی بھی کریں اپنا خیال رکھیں آئی تھنک وی کین اسٹل گیٹ ریڈ آف مینی مینٹل ہیلتھ پرابلمس وچ ور ایکچولی دی آبیس آؤٹ کم آف دس پینڈیمکٹ بٹ الحمد للہ دا تھنگز ہیو ناٹ بین ڈیٹ بیڈ ایز ون وڈ ہیو وریڈ ایف سچ اے بگ پینڈیمک تھینک یو جی ڈاکٹر صاحب تھوڑا سا چفتائل آپ کے بارے میں بتائیے اینڈ آلسو وی وڈ لائک ٹو نو کہ کووڈ ریلیٹڈ سروسز جو آپ نے پہلے آئی نو آپ نے پہلے مینشن کی تھیں بٹ تھوڑا سا جسٹ ٹو ری فوکس آن آن کووڈ انسٹیٹیوٹ آف پیتھالوجی چپتائی لیب چپتائی فاؤنڈیشن سو چپتائی لیب از ناؤ ویری بگ آرگنائزیشن اینڈ اٹ ہیز گاٹ اٹس ادر فیسٹ ایز آئی مینشن ٹو یو سو چپتائی لائبریری از ڈوئنگ اے لاٹ آف گڈ جاب ویئر دی چلڈرن آر کم اسٹوڈینٹس آر کمنگ فائیو ہنڈریڈ پیپل آر سیٹنگ ایوری ڈے ان لائبریری ان ٹو شپس اینڈ دے آر اسٹڈینگ اینڈ پریپیئرنگ فار دیئر ایگزامینیشن As far as the Chuktai lab itself is concerned, it was actually founded by Professor Akhtar Swain Chuktai. He is my teacher. I am proud to be his student in King Edward Medical College. And uh, he started in 1983. And I think after some, 37 years, if you see, uh, with very humble way he started. And uh, it was his PM and his hard work. that now we have got a very big lab in Lahore. That is the Chuktai lab. Then we have got many medical centers in the country where many specialities are there, they are practicing. And there are 200 uh, collection centers. And there are about uh, 10 labs in big cities, full fred lab. Karachi lab is a very big lab. Faisalabad lab, Multan lab, Sianput lab, Peshawar lab. Aftabad, I'm not visited there, but Aftabad lab is a good lab. So this laboratory system, I think it is the largest in the country. So our motto is one lab, one country, one lab. So one lab is connected by internet, by IT, and by logistical system of sample collection, transportation, storage, and sample reaching to the main lab. It will be surprising to everybody if I say that in the middle of the pandemic, when we have not started testing COVID in Karachi, we used to run two vehicles, designated cars, to bring the samples from Karachi to Lahore and then back. And you will be surprised to know that it is 14 hours in the transportation of the samples. And most of the samples which were collected in Karachi by our people, the result was available in 24 hours or in 48 hours. Shower, it takes us six hours, seven hours to reach the sample. Similarly, Islamabad, so it is not only lab, it is a chain of the laboratories, and then chain of the logistics, and chain of the IT. And then, as I mentioned, the chain of these small lab and very big lab. And as far as Chuktai lab in Lahore is concerned, it has got big uh, departments like Department of Virology, Infectious Diseases, Department of uh, Microbiology, Department of Hematology, Department of Histopathology, and then Department of Chemical Pathology. And they are run by very highly experienced and very learned heads of department at professorial mm-hmm. level that's very important to say and then with them they have got a good team of workers with them a team of the consultants team of the residents team of the good technicians scientists and my technical staff if you see their mphil some of them they are doing the, the end of the phd some have done the phd and then doctors they are with me with three doctors who have been trained for fcps and virology So with that big uh, uh, setup, our main motto is to help the patient and maintain the quality. Quality, quality, and quality. And how we maintain the quality? By internal quality control system and by external quality control system. We are participating 
in the external quality control system of college of American pathologist and other institutions. And if there is any small error or something, we do investigations of, of that at very high level. And any complaint which is coming here, it is delved systematically, scientifically, and medically. And one of my doctors, he or she speaks to the person who makes the complaint. Then we impart the education, medical education, and see from throughout the country. We hold our seminars, we hold our conferences, and then write-ups. As I mentioned, at a part of the work of COVID, I wrote at least 20 to 30 uh, editorials, which were published in good English newspapers and then the TV channels. We imported education, and we actually dissipated many myths. We wrote on the ventilators, we wrote on the plasma, Therapy, we wrote on the other myths, and uh, we actually clarified so many doubts which were in the minds of the people. So, and then, as I mentioned, testing capacity we enhanced. We are doing our uh, tests like PCR, antigen tests, we are uh, thinking of that, body testing, and uh, then the testing which are done for the management of these cases, like I mentioned, the other tests which are relevant to the treatment and uh, understanding of the problem of the particular patients in chemical pathology and hematology. So it is a giant concerted and organized effort which is being made. But I don't think so there is any other example in the country with such a big integrated organization of this uh, great volume and level. Thank you. Thank you so much, Saab. That was uh, very encouraging to know that we are in good hands. Um, on, on that encouraging note, I would like to please give aspiring doctors, aspiring pathologists um, some wise words on how to follow on, on your footsteps. Um, just hum pehle, before the broadcast, we were talking about how a lot of re research focus is now shifting towards communicable diseases and um, in infectious diseases um, and viruses, especially. Um, how is it that the very yeah. talented lot in Pakistan can tap into that and, 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 and expand on it? When I came back, I was the only qualified entry in virologist in Pakistan. I came back from England in end of 1988, December. Uh, maybe you can say 89 just start. And we established a center at Armed Forces Institute of Pathology, which I had it. It is a very big center. Center for training and research. And I proudly worked till 2009. And then I went abroad and now I shifted here. And Chuktai Lab is the second center in the country which is recognized for FCPS training in virology. PhD people who are doing PhD from the University of Health Sciences, I am the co-supervisor of many of them and they are also doing research here. Some of our technical and scientific staff is doing PhDs by working here. So my problem was that I was uh, in difficulty in getting the right people and good number of the doctors for training as a virologist. And I asked for the question, why they are not coming? Because there were no jobs in virology in the country. We tried to create jobs in the government level. Professor Chuktai talked to the University of King Edward Medical University. He created two jobs of assistant professors there. And uh, I convinced the government of Punjab to create six jobs. So luckily the jobs are there. And I tell to the young doctors, lady doctors and male doctors, for God's sake, don't think that virology has got no worth or value. I have enjoyed my life. I have been sitting with the ministers and with the chief secretary and government in this pandemic. I was sitting in UN meetings, they were sitting in WHO meetings, and I have Alhamdulillah enjoyed my life to the fullest. And anybody who will join virology will be lucky enough to have the same thing. Why? Because viruses, viral diseases are the only diseases which make the headline. 
I ask which is other specialty in medicine which makes the headline no. But virology, yes. AIDS, influenza, dengue, pandemics, they are all the viral diseases which makes the headlines. And when you make headlines, it means you are listened by the people and you are at a limelight. So the youth It seems like we are having some technical difficulties on uh, Dr. Vahid Zaman's side. Um, perhaps we can wait for about two minutes and see if Dr. Saab joins in. Um, we definitely had a lot of amazing conversation. Uh, we learned a lot about how Pakistan received the COVID uh, pandemic when it started. Uh, what were the implications on uh, common people? How it worked in the benefit for the Pakistani community to comply with um, the, the, the guidelines issued by the state governments and the provincial governments. Um, and, and, and we also talked about how Chultai uh, Lab in, in, in its entirety is working towards creating better opportunities for um, testing sector, uh, availability of um, different tests and Dr. Saab was able to shed on his own personal experience of previous pandemics as well. Um, and, and we just lost him on the personal note where he mentioned how uh, younger doctors need to now tap into um, what virology is and, and maybe look into how we can progress uh, while, while in Pakistan. I have no doubt that we have extremely talented people Back in Pakistan, we just need to broaden our horizons a little bit. Um, I'm hopeful that Doc Saab will be able to um, join us again very soon. Um, but if that is not possible, uh, please leave your comments, your suggestions, your questions on the Facebook Live video at Women Engineers Pakistan. I would very quickly like to mention that while we are um, uh, you know, the representation of women in STEM fields. Uh, we routinely work with um, uh, women in medicine and uh, women in different sectors of science and technology. Um, should Dr. Saab join us again, I would really love to ask him how we as engineers and technologists can contribute in multidisciplinary um, research. Um, I want you to talk to him about how initially we saw that teams of engineers and scientists, especially at NED University in Karachi, at UET in Lahore, uh, joined forces together to come up with, um, you know, crowdsourced um, ventilators and, and different types of testing facilities, masks and PPEs and different preventative measures, and how we can further this and prepare Pakistan for, for God forbid, but for the next uh, next crisis that hits our country because that is just how life is. However, um, I feel that we may not get access to Dr. Vahid Zaman. It was an incredible privilege to get the chance to sit and speak with you, Dr. Saab. And um, on behalf of all our Women Engineers Pakistan and our audience, we thank you for taking time out of your incredibly busy schedule and educating us preparing us and reminding us that the pandemic is still here. Please be careful. Please practice social distancing. Please wear a mask. Please wash hands and stay in touch digitally. 
um, take care of yourselves, take care of your mental health, um, take care of your family, like Dr. Saab said, uh, very wise words that look into your community, don't let people go to bed hungry, um, check on them. We have access now, we live in the world of WhatsApp. Um, having said that, please let us know how Women Engineers Pakistan can help bring more health-related topics towards you and to how how we can partner with different stakeholders in different con uh, communities in Pakistan to spread awareness on um, how we as a society can handle different crises that, that befall us. Thank you very much for tuning in today. Thank you so much for your time. It's been an absolute privilege. Don't forget to uh, leave your questions and comments on the Facebook Live videos. Um, feel free to share, to spread awareness, and stay safe. Khuda Hafiz.